So now we want to see how the several number of registers could be connected to each other. We already have seen the multiplexer based one, dedicated multiplexer based one indeed. So there are uh, other approaches as well, such as the bus based transfers. We will see how a bus could be used and then the three state bus. So the simplest approach is to use the multiplexer dedicated to each register. So this is the simplest approach. Basically, we have seen this at the input side of each register. We will have a dedicated multiplexer which chooses among multiple inputs and then provides it as the main input for the register. We can have the shared transfer passes for registers, which will be called as a bus. So the bus will be a shared pass Trans shared pass, transfer pass for, for the registers. And then we will implement the bus using the multiplexers as one way and then using the three state nodes and drivers as the other way. And in each case, the, the resulting system will have a given, uh, let's say, flexibility in terms of the types of the transfers that could be used simultaneously and it will also be uh, they will be different in terms of the complexity of the design and the cost in the implementation cost in most of the cases the number of the bits that we have for the bus is the length of the receiving register so based on the length of the data that the receiving register gets whether 4 8 16 and so on and so forth the, the length of the bus will be determined here you can see how the dedicated multiplexer based transfers work. We have three number of registers here, R0, R1 and R2. Each one of them have, for each one we have a dedicated multiplexer. In this case we have the 2 to 1 line multiplexer used for each one. Since we are using a 2 to 1 line multiplexer, a select, a single select line for each multiplexer is required. And here we have a dedicated select line for each one. So S0, S1, and S2. The output of the, the output line of the multiplexer is connected to the input, data input line of the corresponding register. And for each register, we have the loading signal load control signal as well l1 is s0 l1 and l2 as you can see over here so for each register we can control loading loading of it uh, independently okay with l1 l0 and l2 as the input side of the multiplexers we have two uh, two lines let's say two data lines of the same length n for the first one, you can see that those come from R2 and R1. So these are the output data output from the registers. In other terms, I can maybe write them as well here. So we will have R2 here, R1 here. For the second multiplexer, we have R1 and R2. And for the third one we have r i'm sorry this is r0 we will have r0 and r1 so for it, with each multiplexer using the select lines we can select among these inputs and then the corresponding data will be available and could be written into the register simultaneously for example we can have R0 receiving R1, R1 receiving R2, and R2 receiving R0 simultaneously. Or R2 could receive R1, for example. Yeah? Any of this could be could happen at the same time in a single clock pulse if we provide proper values for S0, S1, and S2, and proper values for S0, L1, and L2. So this is what we get with the multiplexer based transfers. We are quite flexible. 
in terms of the types of the transfers that we that we could do but the cost is not the optimum we are using a dedicated multiplexer for each register while on the other hand we can have a multiplexer bus approach in this case we don't have a dedicated multiplexer used for each register but we have a single multiplexer which is shared among all the registers as an example we we did three registers r0 r1 and r2 that we had we have the indeed four to one line multiplexer three inputs are used here the output of the register of the multiplexer as you can see here i highlighted in green is connected directly to the inputs of all the registers so all the registers receive the same input from the multiplexer however still we have l0 l1 and l2 in order to control loading of each one of the registers independently then for the multiplexer there are three inputs which come from the data output of the registers or in other terms we have r0 here r1 here and r2 so r0 r1 and r2 are available at the input side of the multiplexer then depending on the select inputs s1 and s0 one input line will be selected it will be available at the output of the multiplexer and then depending on what we have for l0 l1 and l and l2 any of those three registers could be loaded at the rising edge of the clock so here we can see that it the design is more compact meaning that we are using less number of multiplexers but the amount of flexibility that we have in terms of simultaneous transfers is limited because we can have at the output of the multiplexer or at the input side of the registers at any time instant we will have the value coming from a single register for example this this operation that I'm going to highlight in yellow R0 receiving R1 and R1 receiving R0 is not possible to be done simultaneously why because as the source register we can have only a single one so R1 is the source therefore we cannot have R0 over here while the second one is possible because in both cases r0 and r2 are receiving the value from r1 so this is a possible one and this is impossible so we can see that in terms of simultaneous transfers we are limited compared to the case in which we had the dedicated multiplexer for our system however the cost is reduced the next way of dealing with the register transfer system is using the three state bus when we do so we will uh, indeed we kind of make our system even more compact but again the, the flexibility in terms of the uh, simultaneous transfers will be reduced so we will be more limited you can see how it is uh, indeed implemented by focusing here so we have a single register r which is connected to its output is connected to a three state buffer so you should know how the three state buffer works here we have the enable so when we have enable equal to one the input will be connected to the output like this but when we have enable equal to zero the input and output of the three state buffer will be disconnected from each other then the output of the three state buffer that we have here is also connected to the input of the register of the same register indeed it is the case for all the registers so this is the internal structure of the register with the three state buffer so with the three state bus indeed and here you can see how it is shown in the compact way we have the load control 
signal here we have the enable signal here and the input and output of the register are shown with these uh, with these two arrows yeah which is a double sided arrow and we also have the triangle the inverted triangle over here to to show that we have the three state bus once we have this this situation then the input and output line of all the registers could be connected to the same bus and that's what we have here so all of them are connected to each other but anyways you should keep in mind that at any time instant on the bus we will have the data coming from one of the registers only so we need to manage the enable signals here enable 0 e0 e1 and e2 such that at any time instant at any time instance we have the data from r0 r1 or r2 available on the bus so let's let's let me give you an example if we have e0 equal to 1 e1 and e2 equal to 0 this means that the r0 is enabled when r0 is enabled we have the content of of r0 available on the bus and now depending on the values that we have l1 l0 and l2 that r0 could be written into r1 or r2 depending on the values that we have for l1 and l2 so if we enable the load for them yeah? on the other hand if we have e0 equal e0 and e1 equal to 0 and e2 equal to 1 then the the third register will be enabled and the data that we have on the bus will come from it so r2 will be here and then depending on l0 and l1 we can write it back to r1 or r0 depending on our needs depending on what operation we need to perform so at any time you can see here that on the bus we will have a data coming from a, only a single register so either from r0 or from r1 or from r2 so we are limited in terms of the simultaneous transfers but the cost is quite small compared to the previous cases